Hi, Ms. Jane here from the Stilva Library. Today is Tooth Fairy Day, so I have a Tooth Fairy story for you today. This one is a Pete the Cat story, Pete the Cat and the Lost Tooth. It was written by Kimberly and Jane Steen and published by Harper Collins. So Pete the Cat and the Lost Tooth. Oh no, Pete had lost a tooth. What should he do? Pete shows the tooth to his mom. Put the tooth under your pillow, she says. The tooth fairy will come and give you money for it. Awesome. Pete thinks that under his pillow is a strange place for a tooth, but his mom is usually right, and it would be pretty cool to meet the tooth fairy. Pete puts the tooth under his pillow. Then he closes his eyes, and he pretends to sleep. Suddenly, he hears a jiggling noise. Pete opens his eyes. The Tooth Fairy is at his window. The Tooth Fairy flies into Pete's room. She looks worried. What's wrong, Pete asks. It's a very busy night, the Tooth Fairy explains. I don't know how I'm going to collect all the teeth that fell out today. Pete jumps up. I can help, he says. The Tooth Fairy thinks that is an awesome idea. With a flick of her wand, she gives Pete magic wings, and now he can fly just like her. Oh, so awesome. Pete loves his new wings. He zips around his room, and he does loop-de-loops in the air. Groovy, he shouts. Finally, Pete settles down. So, he says, what do I have to do? The Tooth Fairy gives Pete a list of names. You need to be, visit each of these cool kids to get their teeth. The Tooth Fairy gives Pete two bags. One is full of teeth and one is full of coins. Take the tooth and put it in this bag, she says. Then leave a coin from this bag under the pillow. Pete looks at the bag of teeth. It already looks full. How will I fit any more teeth in here, he asks. The Tooth Fairy smiles. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. Being a tooth fairy comes with a certain kind of magic. Far out, Pete says. He is ready to go. Pete's first stop is Callie's house. He flies through the window and straight to her bed. Pete lifts up Callie's pillow. He takes her tooth and he leaves behind a coin. Next up is Alligator's house. Pete finds Alligator's tooth. It's big and sharp. He pulls it out from under the pillow and puts a coin in its place. Then Pete sneaks back out the window. Pete smiles to himself. This job is easy. Pete's last stop is Gus's. He flies inside and he reaches under Gus's pillow. Uh-oh, there is no tooth. What's he going to do? Pete looks next to Gus's drums. He looks in Gus's drawer. He even checks inside Gus's baseball mitt. The tooth is nowhere to be found. Does Pete panic? No, he just keeps on looking for the tooth. Just then, Gus wakes up. Gus, Pete cries, I've been looking everywhere for your lost tooth. Where is it? My tooth, Gus asks. Pete nods. I'm supposed to get it for the tooth fairy. But Pete, Gus says, platypuses do not have teeth. Gus opens his mouth and shows Pete. See? Hmm. Far out, Pete says. No teeth at all. Gus shrugs. Sorry, it would have been nice to join in the tooth fairy fun. Pete smiles. No worries, he says. He takes a coin from his bag and he slips it under Gus's pillow. Thank you, says Gus. You're welcome, Pete says. Good night. Pete leaves Gus's room and he heads home. On his way, he comes across the tooth fairy. All done, she asks. Did you have any trouble? Pete shakes his head and holds out the two bags. Nope, everything went great. That was awesome. Thanks, Pete, the tooth fairy says. She takes the bags. I should be, go, or be getting to my next house. As Pete makes his way home, he thinks about Gus. Not everyone is the same.
but being kind is always cool. That sounds like the perfect title for his next song. <laughs>